were finally ready to start. I was waiting on someone to get up and start dancing to James Brown, but I don't know what happened to y'all. We'll, we'll do that next time. We'll do that next time. Yesterday, our country experienced another horrific school shooting that left three children and three adults dead. We begin this evening in a moment of silence for the victims of gun violence. And we do so, and as we do so, we do so in the awareness as SB 41, a bill that removes permit requirement for private purchases of guns, as it is heading back to the Senate and House after Governor Cooper's veto for an override vote this week. So I want us to begin this evening with a moment of silence to remember all the victims of gun violence. I want to welcome you to Pullen Memorial Baptist Church and to thank you for showing up tonight. I do think it was Woody Allen who said 80% of success is showing up. You have gotten 80% already tonight, so thank you. Here at Pullen, we live by two mantras. The first is this, what does the Holy One require of us? but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. And the second mantra is this, show up, pay attention, speak your truth in love, and don't be attached to the outcomes unless those outcomes are about justice for all. So tonight is about that. It's about showing up. It's about paying attention. It's about listening to one another in this town hall meeting. It is about speaking your truth, telling your story, saying what you need to say. And then it is about mobilizing to make sure that North Carolina is a state that seeks justice for all people. We are not here to make our state more Republican, Democrat, or independent. We are here because we care about democracy. We are here because we care about the highest privilege we have as citizens of the United States of America, the right and privilege to cast a ballot on election days. We are here tonight because we care about all children in our state and in our country, their right to a high quality education in a safe environment. We are here because our children who identify as trans and queer deserve the space and affirmation to live their most authentic lives. We are here because we believe in our right to gather as citizens and have our voices heard in protest without fear and intimidation of being locked up for exercising our rights to gather and to protest. We are here because we believe in the words of the poet, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. And for some of us, we are here because the one we follow said to us, when you welcome the stranger and the immigrant and the refugee, you welcome me. We are here because our criminal justice system, system is not that just. And it is in need of significant reform. And finally, we are here to make sure our elected leaders hear our voices as people impacted in this state, 
as people who live in this state. North Carolina set an agenda 10 years ago for a moral movement in our state. People of all races, political affiliations, religious background, economic situations, gender identities came together to fight for each other's rights. We didn't just show up, though, to advocate for our personal agendas. We showed up to fight for justice for all people. We must continue to build the fusion movement that was started here in North Carolina 10 years ago and that common cause has built over the last 53 years in this country. For two years, a global pandemic kept us from coming together in ways that we were used to, to have our voices heard, to stand before our political leaders and advocate for our rights. And while many of us continued the journey for justice on our own, we were isolated from one another. Zoom just isn't the same as gathering at Centennial Plaza on Jones Street That's right. and going into our house, the people's house, to have our voices heard. We can do a lot on Zoom, and I'm grateful for the technology, but it's not the same. And now we are in a place where we can begin to gather again and to not just offer our prayers and thoughts, but to offer our hands and our feet and our voices and our minds and our spirits to the cause of justice for all people. So we are back. Let's hear it. We are back. And we are ready. We are ready to be back. Um, it is a time for us to recommit to this work after having been separated and isolated for a while. You know what's going on. Our communities are experiencing attacks on early voting, mail-in ballots, free speech and protest, queer and trans youth, abortion access, education funding, all of the regressive policies that you hear that are coming back before our legislature. And in response, North Carolinians everywhere from Manteo to Murphy, from dirt roads to downtowns, seniors to students across race and class are coming together as a people's coalition, refusing to let our lawmakers pass their dangerous agenda without a struggle and a fight. Who's ready for a struggle and a fight? All right, All right I'm ready. I'm ready. So that's what this town hall meeting is about tonight. That's why we're here. And I'm just simply here to give a welcome and to kind of set that spirit and agenda and then turn it over to the rock stars of Angaza and Gino and Sailor, and they're going to get us on the right track to do the work that we need to do. So let's give a hand for those rock stars that are our leaders and are going to set us on the right path. Appreciate that. Oh. I might need that mic. Okay. I thought mine was working, but I guess it ain't. Yeah, you're home. Can y'all hear me? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold this. Hold my speech. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Okay. okay, see if that one works. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, while they get everything not, set up, uh, just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, we're going to be here song. for a minute tonight. Uh, if you want food, it is on this side. If you want water, it is also on this side. Feel free to step out if you need air at any point right behind you. There is a restroom that way. And um, I think that's actually, that's the housekeeping, so I'm going to turn it back to Angaza. But just know those things as we're going through. Thanks, Appreciate it, Gino. If y'all can't hit me, let me know, man. If you can't hit me, then just 
he, just smile at me if you can hear me the whole time. I appreciate that right there. So as Sister, uh, Reverend Sister Petty was saying just a second ago, we've seen that conservative forces, man, they get inside this General Assembly and they came out swinging in 2023. Like they was trying to knock our heads off. Did they not? I mean, we've seen them come through, as she just said. They attacked us with early voting. They attacked our right to protest. They attacked free speech. They attacked education funding. They attacked our queer and trans youth. Police are attacking black and brown folks, destroying us, killing us, treating us in ways that they wouldn't dare treat white people. Even our pockets are under attack. The cost of living is rising. Houses are rising. Education is rising. But the wages we get paid at work are not rising. And this whole time, elected officials act like they have no idea what to do about it. And that's part of the problem right there. So we see every year this conservative agenda. They get in the office and they try everything they can to turn the country, turn our state to the right. But when our progressive allies, our liberals, even our moderates get in the office, they don't try to turn this country, this state back to the left. They try to keep it the way it's been. And in turn, we see ourselves slowly slip more and more into this place we're at now, where we're being attacked on all fronts. And in this moment, we're getting hit with all these punches, and it's beating us down, but now it's time for us to start throwing our own, as we started doing. So as you'll hear about, on March 14th, just a couple of weeks ago, we had hundreds of people go down to the General Assembly, march in the General Assembly, deliver letters and invitations to politicians to come here today, hundreds of them. And we'll see how many actually show up today. But we're having town halls like this all over the state, starting right here in Raleigh, just to build our collective understanding of these issues, to make our voices heard. Even if the politicians don't come out here to see us, they'll get the video, they hear about us on the news making these statements to them. And most importantly, to hold them accountable, to push them to do something, because I talked to some of y'all in the room, and I know y'all understand this, but it fills me with anger and irritation when they come and tell us to vote for them just to get in the office and tell us ain't nothing that they can do. They know we need more money, but they can't do nothing to raise no wages. They know police are killing us, but they can't do anything to increase transparency in policing. They know we don't have places to live, but they can't find a way to pass an affordable housing bill. And so much so that when we get into space, like we were in the space last night, politicians, city officials expect us to be happy to see them, to talk nice when they're around. But you have outbursts because people are hurting and we're hurting because even though we do a marvelous job blocking all the attacks that we're facing, it still hurts to have to block. I can't hold my hands up and guard my grill for so long before it starts to wear me down and we feel worn down. But we know we're powerful, so we feel the power that we have. Because if we can't do anything else, we can demand that the folks we do vote for pass something, push something progressive to give us some energy to fuel this fight going forward. So we're going to talk about this long train of abuses that we've been dealing with, all the different ways that General Assembly legislators and the courts have done little things that seem like nothing when you're on the ground just trying to make it go to work every day, protect your family. But in reality, these little things that they're doing have major consequences for us on the ground. We have to understand what they are. We have to understand how they're able to do this to us. And we have to understand the excuses that we hear when people like me, my brother Abbasi, and others in this room go and tell our elected officials we want them to do more, and they tell us there's nothing they can do. And finally, I'll close with this, too. For all the elected officials that are here, that are watching this, that are doing everything, trying to earn our vote, if we vote you in the office just for you to turn around and tell us, well, I don't have the power to do them. We don't have the numbers. There's nothing we can do. Well, what's the point of us voting you in the office if you don't also have your same progressive agenda, the way they have a conservative agenda that they use and hit us with every single year? 
And I'll stop with this. But y'all see, we all see how they came into 2023, these bills blazing. Every week we turn around, another horrible bill was hitting us in the head. It's almost like they planned to do this, isn't it? It's almost like they were scheming about this for the past couple years. So where is our scheme? They changed the slide, right? I was about to point to so them. Where is our scheme at? Where are our elected officials at that are going to do the same thing from our side to fight and get us some wins out here, too? So we'll talk about that long train of abuses. I'll stop for a second. I'll pass it on over to Sailor to come on up with that. I appreciate y'all's time, though. We'll get into the question and answer after this too, the question section. Um, I remember, uh, my name is, I do remember my name. <laughs> this is how I always start. Uh, my name is Sailor Jones. I use he him pronouns now. I am associate director at an organization called Common Cause North Carolina. Have you heard of that? Yeah. yeah. Um, Eleven years ago, I followed Reverend Nancy Petty in the Moral March. Um, and... It was a fast march because Nancy Petty is a fast woman. <laughs> and <Not that way. laughs> it was 11 years ago. Uh, and we were, we were walking fast to get to the man in the back, Rob Stevens. He was up near the stage. And I was walking alongside a lot of the people in this room. All the way up to uh, near Jones Street, the old capital. And as Gaza said, we were just there again the other day for the exact same reason, as I recall. And so everything old is new again. And uh, in the 10 years since, I have followed in Gaza Laughing House everywhere, uh, organizing family from way back. And we will need in Gaza and Reverend Petty now more than ever. Make no mistake, friends, North Carolina will prove to be the nation's 2013 epicenter in the fight for a just democracy for all. Teach, teach. In 2022, uh, 2022 elections gave the same legislative leadership who we invited here tonight, here are their four chairs, a working supermajority to pass unprecedented laws attacking our ability to make our voices heard. It was paired with a state Supreme Court, newly conservative, keen on overturning pro-democracy precedent in the great state of North Carolina. So I, I wanna open by reminding folks that the high profile attacks on our democracy will come from an unlikely place this time as well our courts. With new justices in place, just sworn in, the state's highest court decided to rehear two of the greatest voting rights victories that happened in North Carolina in 2022. Y'all know about this? On March 14th and 15th, they heard a historic partisan gerrymandering ruling that said our state constitution would not let you draw our maps for partisan gain. Y'all remember this? They reheard that at the behest of the legislature. They also heard, reheard, a case deciding that their ID law was racially discriminatory. And so they were asked by the legislature to rehear both of those cases. They said, mm-mm-mm, we're going to do that in 2023. If we get a bad result in those cases, friends, make perfectly clear, partisan gerrymandering in this state will not be unconstitutional as it was moments ago. A racist voter ID law that was racist and is racist will likely be returned to the General Assembly or maybe worse. Why? Ahead of the 2024 presidential election. Make no mistake. Raise your hand. This is interactive. Raise your hand if you believe North Carolina's constitutional protections should change with states' elections. 
Raise your hand if you think our protections should change with state selections. <laughs> well, there's one person who is not here who believes otherwise. North Carolina House Speaker Tim Moore said to the Supreme Court on the rehearing of these key cases, he said the people of North Carolina sent a message on election day rejecting the decisions of the outgoing majority as if the Constitution changes with our elections. Shame. Well, that is a sham, and you add an E at the end, and it's a damn shame, and we are going to fight back now. This is a rare thing for the Supreme Court to redo and rehear these protections. And we make no mistake, there's more to come. So here we are here today to say to you and to these empty chairs that are here today, from the legislative leaders that we invited. These reveal a judiciary and a legislature in lockstep, working together, okay? Make no mistake, in what we are calling a, chain, a train of abuses, as Angaza said, that is steamrolling all over our rights. In North Carolina, friends, I want to make perfectly clear, it is March 2023, and this train has already left the station. In one month in North Carolina, and a lot can happen, we all know, House lawmakers opened their long legislative session in January 2023 with a proposed rule change that would give the House more power to override the veto and give our representatives less time and us less time to fight back, okay? On January 19th, leaked documents, not ones publicly made available, leaked documents revealed that the U.S. Supreme, uh, North Carolina Supreme Court Chief Justice, Paul Newby, wants to get rid of legal precedent from the Court of Appeals that he does not like. I will repeat. The next day, the General Assembly asked the, U the North Carolina Supreme Court to rehear those two cases I was just talking about. The next week, there were oral arguments in CSI v. Moore, a case that restored the rights to 56,000 North Carolinians, gave them their rights back because they were stolen from people who were on probation and parole. I want to make perfectly clear, 56,000 people will change any election in North Carolina. They have signaled they will overturn that too. On February 3rd, the next day, the North Carolina Supreme Court moved to rehear Harper and Holmes voter ID and partisan gerrymandering. The next week, the North Carolina House approved House Bill 40. Y'all heard of this? the so-called riot bill that was supposed to deter you from protesting. Well, I wonder why. Because then they dropped all the bills you would want to protest. They want to terrorize immigrant communities by forcing your elected sheriffs to be extensions of ICE, House Bill 10. They want to force teachers to out students who use different pronouns. That is Senate Bill 49. They want to bar teaching of how race impacts history, AKA history. <laughs> they want to eliminate standard protections for unhoused families, families living in hotels because of the pandemic, because of economic conditions. And finally, last but certainly not least, Reverend Petty, they want to make it easier to buy guns. Yes, there are a few things to protest. Amen? Amen. Are you ready? Yes. They were ready for you too. On February 8th, the House passed House Bill 40 to deter you from doing so. The same day as the House passed this, and I'll close here, North Carolina Republican lawmakers filed House Bill 71, allowing justices like Supreme Court Justice Paul Newby 
to remain on the bench until age 76. A not so veiled attempt to extend his tenure as it draws to a close around election time. Lockstep, my friends, on a train of abuses. Chew, chew. What are we gonna do? Bye. Derail <laughs> That was just one month in North Carolina. Y'all ready? We're in a new one. Since then, the courts and the legislature have continued their attacks, friends. They want to slash your early voting options. They want to cut the grace period for voting by the mail. They want to make same-day registration a provisional ballot, not a regular one. And did I mention what the court is trying to do? Roll back a decades-long mandate, guarantee, nay, a promise, from Leandro to fund our schools. That was March. Are you ready? So while North Carolinians are no stranger to distorted districts or voter suppression, friends, or the attacks on the most vulnerable communities right before a presidential cycle, this time, friends, the courts will not save us. Who will? I wonder. Who will? We will. Who might? We might. <laughs> Who will? We will. That's right. So my answer, friends, is you. It will be up to us to inspire what we are calling a fourth branch. Say it with me. Fourth branch. A fourth branch of public interest, a fourth branch of the press, and a fourth branch of who? The people. This is the fourth branch that can stand up to any of those branches. This is the fourth branch that we need right now. I am hoping that in Raleigh tonight, Y'all are going to kick off the fourth branch. And we are going to take the fourth branch to every district where they live and where they work and remind them of we, the what? The people. We are part of what? The fourth branch. Amen? Amen. I would like now to talk to some people who know how to fight back. Who is that? It's uh, time to talk to you. Thank you, sir. So now we're going to get into why we are here tonight, which is to hear from you. And I want to take a moment. Uh, Brother Ngaza is going to help facilitate and moderate for us. I'm going to lay out the instructions and start the speaking uh, of people who are here in the audience. But I want uh, each of y'all to look to your right. And now I want you to look to your left. All right, I want you to look at me. Do I look like your lawmaker? No. Did you see your lawmaker to the right? No. Did you see them to the left? Yes. Oh, all right, we, got one. we do have one yet. Which will... That's right. And I want to point out two things before we get started. I want to first acknowledge uh, that Senator Lisa Grafstein of Raleigh is here tonight. And that Representative Eric Eger from Asheville is also here tonight. But two weeks ago, on this very day, as Angaza said, hundreds of us delivered invitations to Speaker Moore, Senate Leader Berger, and in the time since, to Democratic leadership as well. And I want you to just note that two of the most powerful people in this state received hundreds of invitations, and they are not here tonight. But we are still going to tell them what we think. I have a long list of people who want to speak. And we're recording what is being shared tonight. And trust, one way or another, they are going to get the video of you speaking. They are going to hear you loud and clear. We will use every communication channel, even if it's a carrier pigeon carrying a tape, which I don't know about because I think those were outlawed before I was born. Uh, sorry, Sam. Um, to make sure they hear you tonight. So I'm going to give just a quick 
rundown of how this will work. Uh, we are going to call people's names to come up. Uh, I will announce who the person is that up and then who is on deck. Speakers will receive three minutes, uh, and that is because we have a lot of people who want to speak. We want to make sure everyone has a chance to do so. April here, raise your hand, April. We'll have a little timer for you to let you know when you have one minute left, uh, and we ask that you respect that time. Uh, please note that for our friends who are Spanish speakers, we will extend that time because we'll have simultaneous, uh, we'll have interpretation uh, into English right after they finish, so please note that. If you are able, please come up this way when it is your turn to speak uh, and come to the front here to speak. And we ask that you tell us who you are, where you came from tonight, and if you'd like, what motivated you to come and the other issues that are top of mind for you, especially with what Angaza, Reverend Petty, and Sailor have laid out. Additionally, if you just have a question, please feel free to share your question. And some of our information experts here, some of our lawmakers, will be able to answer those questions as well. Are we clear on everything, my friends? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Are we clear on everything? Okay. One more thing, group norms. If you go back a few slides, Sailor. Our organizations here are nonpartisan. Uh, this is a nonpartisan space and a place for nonpartisan solutions to the challenges we face, which does not mean we cannot criticize the parties. We just like the equal opportunity about it, right? <laughs> we are centering racial justice here. Uh, we know, as Reverend Petty said, as Angaza laid out, that many of the resource inequities in this state are due to racist and oppressive policies, and we are acknowledging that we are here as a fusion movement. And finally, we commit to speaking from our experience to engaging respectfully with each other and honoring time limits. That does not preclude sharing righteous anger. But we are in this space tonight. Uh, we ask to be respectful with each other as we are speaking. So with that being said, I'm going to hand the mic here to Ngaza to help facilitate us through. Um, and the first person up to speak is Paige Potter. And right after Paige, Oh, and to be clear, folks, this is a, a sheet. If you are not, if you do not want to speak, that is totally fine. Uh, this is a sheet that you signed at the beginning uh, when you came in. If you want to speak, uh, and feel free, Paige, you are totally fine to to not do so. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um, there may have been a little confusion about that from the beginning. That's my fault. So uh, let's go first to Claire Stone, okay. and after Claire Stone will be Lamar Bryant. Okay. Come on. Up. I was hoping I wouldn't be first, but <laughs> it's the way it goes. All right, um, I, I don't think I'm going to need that, but um, I'm Claire Stone. I'm from Rockingham County. Uh, the goal of the People's Coalition is to let the legislators know the citizens of North Carolina demand accountability. We see the legislator attempting to pass a dangerous agenda, doing their best to ignore and suppress about 50% of North Carolinians. And the reason why I came and I'm going to keep showing up is we will not let hate win. That's, That's right. going around the country. It's not just here. Tyranny is when a group in power works as hard as they can to produce, legitimize, and distribute propaganda, normalize bigotry, censor and punish free speech and protest, and claim to be victims themselves. Do not um, North Carolina laws and constitution, do they have to actually state that it's illegal to rig maps to guarantee that those in power stay in power? Isn't it clear enough that equal protection means Equal protection, we aren't targeting leaders in power. We're just asking about what it is they're doing with their power. Bills have been drafted by this legislature that attack black history and literature, target LGBTQ youth and adults, target policies that do not conform with Christianity as they see it. These attacks have to be done under the cover of night behind closed doors. But in a press conference, we're told that well-meaning citizens and courts sanction these actions. These bills dehumanize the actual victims. They suppress the existence of those who really experience the harm. They stoke fear and advance the belief that people who are different from me are evil. If you don't think that this description is accurate, imagine laws that limit instruction in white history and white literature, that limit governmental and citizen actions when they don't conform to Muslim principles. 
that limit rights and community participation for people who are straight. One definition of authoritarianism is a lack of concern for the wishes and the opinions of others. We see that those people in power in North Carolina right now think that the ends justify the means. We see the attempted reversals of court holdings that found evidence of prejudice existed last month, but doesn't exist now. We're calling the tyranny what it is, and we want to not let hate win. Thanks. All right, so I'm gonna read the names we have on the list next. I'm gonna let you guys know now, we had this sheet with our sign-up sheets too. So some folks that signed up up here, I don't know if they're speakers or people that signed in, but I'm gonna call the names, and if I got it wrong, oh, forgive me, forgive me. All right, we just go down the list though. Uh, so next, I think we got John Chase. John Chase in here? Mistake. Okay, okay, no problem. That's an example right there, okay. Appreciate it, Brother John. Uh, next, my sister Griselda, you in here? It is. Y'all give it on up for Sister Griselda. Yes, indeed. You a lot of good ones. I see y'all all the time. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Griselda Alonso. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Griselda Alonso. Um, soy indocumentada. I'm undocumented. El día de hoy la propuesta HB10 con 71 votos a favor y 44 en contra, fue aprobada en el Pleno de la Cámara de Representantes y fue enviada al Senado, donde va a ser debatida otra vez en los comités. So today, the bill HB 10 was uh, approved uh, by 7, 71 against 44. Uh, this is a bill that's going to be sent back to the, to the Senate to be considered again. Les voy a dar algunos datos. I'll provide some, some uh, data. La población en Carolina del Norte es de 10.631.700 10, personas y 1.118.596 son de origen latino. So the population in North Carolina is 10,631,700 and 1,118,596 are people uh, of uh, Latin origin. Lo que quiere decir que somos el 10% de la comunidad de este estado which means that we are 10% of the population of the state. A nivel estatal, la población latina creció un 40%. Uh, statewide, um, Latin population grew, uh, grew up by 40%. Este fue uno de los estados donde la población latina creció más rápido a nivel nacional. Uh, this is one of the states where uh, Latin um, population um, in increased by uh, more than any other state nationally. Desde el 2010, 10 condados en, entre estos rurales vieron el mayor crecimiento de su población debido a la población latina. Uh, ten counties in the state um, saw this growth in population, uh, the Latin population, um, uh, more than... which is the highest growth in population that they had ever seen. In the 2006, para que se den una idea, la población latina contribuíamos 9 mil millones a la economía del estado a través de sus compras, impuestos, mientras que el costo neto para el, para el presupuesto estatal, después de las contribuciones fiscales hispanas, se estima que 102 eh, por residente hispano por atención médica, educación y correccionales. So in 2006, the uh, Latin population uh, contributed more than 9,000, uh, more than uh, 9 billion to the economy of the state through uh, their purchases, taxes, while the net cost uh, for the state budget after con um, fiscal contributions for, from Hispanics, is estimated to be 102 million per, per Hispanic resident. El poder adquisitivo de los hispanos en Carolina del Norte en el 2020 superaba los 25 millones el impacto económico anual, según el estudio de la Asociación de Banqueros de Carolina del Norte. The, 
buying, buying power for Hispanics in, in North Carolina in 2020 um, went beyond 25 billion and as an economic impact yearly according to the study by the Association of uh, Bankers in North Carolina. Existe el mito de que los latinos solo trabajamos en el campo, la agricultura, la construcción, pero la realidad es que con el aumento de la población, los trabajadores se han expandido a variedades de, y prof, de, de profesiones y muchos de ellas profesionales. Eh, eso lo comparte un profesor de la Universidad de Chapogia. There is a myth that the Latins only work in the fields, agriculture, and construction. But the reality is that with the um, in increase of population, their jobs have expanded into a variety of professions. Many of them are professionals. Uh, that's a, um, an idea that was shared by a professor from the uh, university in Chapel Hill. Y bueno, ya no les voy a las estadísticas porque aburren. And I'm not gonna and I'm, I'm not gonna talk more about statistics because they're boring. Pero son buenas para los políticos. But they are good for politicians. Si no escuchan números, no nos escuchan. So if they don't hear numbers, they don't hear us. Hace 12 años en Atlanta pasó la propuesta HB 87. It's about 12 years ago, HB 87 was approved in Atlanta. Que es idéntica a la HB 10, la cual la HB 10 no les expliqué al principio obligaría a todos los alguaciles del estado a cooperar con migración. Which is uh, identical to HB 10 here, uh, and something I didn't explain is that HB 10 would would force all the uh, um, sheriffs and county to uh, in counties to cooperate with immigration. Si escucharon los números económicos de nuestra aportación, ¿verdad? Uh, you did hear about the uh, financial numbers about our contributions, right? <laughs> y creo que hay algunos que hacen política. But I think there are some here who are just here for, for politics. ¿Qué creen? What do you think? <laughs> Cuando en Atlanta se aprobó esa propuesta, el 50% de la comunidad latina dejó el Estado y dejó de pasar a hacer trabajo principalmente en la agricultura. When, when this bill was approved in Atlanta, about 50% of that population left the state and they stopped working only for agriculture. Y aquí les voy a dar otros números para que los que hacen política lo lleven con sus colegas. And I have more numbers here so that those who only work in politics take these to their colleagues. Más de 150 mil trabajadores agrícolas y sus dependientes trabajan cada año en Carolina del Norte en cultivos que incluye tabaco, invernadero y vivero, árboles de Navidad, verduras y frutas. Junto a estos cultivos producen más de 2.4 mil millones de ventas en la economía de Carolina del Norte. So over 150,000 workers uh, in, the, in agriculture, along with their dependents, work every year in North Carolina in, um, fields, that in, in fields that include tobacco, uh, greenhouses, uh, Christmas trees, um, vegetables, and fruits. Altogether, this um, production makes more than 2.4 uh, billion in sales uh, that, that's added, that are added to the economy of North Carolina. La agricultura representa el 22% de los ingresos de Carolina del Norte. El trabajo de cada trabajador agrícola aporta más de 12.000 en ganancia a la economía de Carolina del Norte. Agriculture represents uh, 22% of um, uh, profits or income for North Carolina. The work of each, wor uh, um, each worker adds more than $12,000 in earnings to the economy of North Carolina yearly. Queridos representantes que hacen leyes a favor o en contra de nosotros, espero que hayan escuchado esos números, porque si esta propuesta, la HB10, se llega a convertir en ley, no duden que el 50% de los ingresos que acabo de mencionar se pierdan en el Estado. Acabamos de pasar una crisis de salud. Y ahorita estamos por lo que es salud mental. Primero fue covid y a eso se le, se le deriva la salud mental de nuestra comunidad. No solamente la mía, también la de ustedes. 
Dear representatives who do politics, I hope you have heard all these numbers. I assure you that if HB 10 is approved, 50% of our population will leave, and uh, those numbers that I shared uh, is income that our, our state will, will lose and then have. We just went through a health crisis, now it's a mental crisis with, with the pandemic and, and everything. And uh, th those, are, those are real numbers. Um, we'll have to work to, to provide the food for, for, our, for our families. Durante la pandemia fuimos trabajadores esenciales. ¿Y ahora qué? ¿Vamos a hacer puestos pero en jaulas? To make profit of us? No chinguen. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, we were considered essential workers. But now, what? Are we going to be put in, in, in cages? You know, Dilo. don't have for us. No. <laughs> Necesitamos trabajar con las comunidades, ir a nuestros barrios, ir con nuestra gente, hacer política aquí está bien, ir a la legislatura está bien. Yo vengo de la legislatura, hoy estuve todo el día allí, pero la realidad es que necesitamos ir a nuestras comunidades, a donde ellas viven y decirles lo que está pasando, porque mucho de lo que está aquí, nuestra comunidad no lo sabe, sea blanca, sea negra, sea brown, no saben lo que está pasando. Gracias. To let her know what's going on. It's good that we have meetings like this, talk about this. Uh, we go to uh, the legislature. I was there actually the full, uh, whole day. Uh, but it's it's important to communicate with people where they live, where they are, to let them know what's going on because they are not aware of what's going on. And this has to be done in communities, uh, white communities, black communities, brown communities. They, they don't know what's going on. Thank you. Griselda, thank you for that comment right there, man. You're exactly right. We have to take this, what we're doing right now, and take it right back to our people and our communities, wherever we at, man. So if you're a black person, you got to organize more black folks. If you're a Latinx person, organize more Latinx folks. If you're white, organize more white folks, man. Have these same conversations right smack dab in your community. So with that being said, we're going to keep it moving. We're going to call on uh, Crystal. Crystal, you in here? Okay, okay, keep it moving, keep it moving, appreciate that. And what about Claire? Is Claire in here? Uh, Claire's put first. Okay, right. Claire, my, my bad, name. Claire, I'm sorry, Claire. Okay, one more we got, well, two more we got. Uh, is this uh, Lemaire? Yeah. Yes, indeed, come on up, appreciate you. Thank you. It's, it's, uh, I don't want to correct you, but it's Lamar. Uh, I know I got an extra I in there somewhere. I think my aunt was trying to. Be funny a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I, I am Lamar Bryan, and I am the Triangle Regional Coordinator for Advanced Carolina and North Carolina Black Alliance. These organizations are a C3 and a C4 organization, but both are, have a mission of building black political power in North Carolina. And so what I do want to say is, thank you so much. What I do want to say is, um, now I'm no mathematician. And I'll say that again. Um, I'm no mathematician, but when I say this, I hope you realize that it's a problem. Also, when I say this couple words, I would love for you to inhale and exhale. There's been 130 mass shootings in this country this year. Second time, there has been 100, more than 130 mass shootings in this country this year. Now, I know you probably don't have out your phones, um, but if you don't mind pulling out your calendar, you'll notice that we're in March. So I'll say it the third time, and I hope you really inhale and exhale and realize that this is a problem. There have been more than 130 mass shootings in our country this year. The fact that I asked you to inhale and exhale, I hope you realize that you're still here. I hope you realize that you have a purpose in this world. 
I hope you realize that you can change the world, but we cannot do that by just talking about what we want to do. True. We can't do that by just getting in the seat and not moving in the seat. We can't do that if we don't have meetings like this, because there will be, and I'll ask you to inhale and exhale one more time, there will be more than 130 mass shootings in this country this year. Thank you. That was short and powerful. Thank you for that, Lamar. Appreciate that. I see one more name on the list. The last one we got up here, and I think this is John. I don't know the last name, though. We got another John? What's that? John Chase. No, it's not John Chase. I got, John Chase. I got him first time. Yeah. <laughs> this is a different John. One more John? Okay, I guess not. Tony. Tony? Is that Tony? That Tony starts with an S? John? <laughs> John Judson? Okay, let's uh, say, okay. So we'll keep going, keep going. Uh, so the next person, uh, Irma Ramos. No, okay. Magali Mayorga. No, all right, all right, look at that, y'all. Uh, Liz Ross. Liz Ross, no, no. Got another tough one. Tony, Quad there you go. Yeah. I'm, you're gonna have to say your name, sir, sorry about that. <laughs> Pronounce Smith. <laughs> What's your last name? Quaterero. So um, I didn't come here prepared to speak tonight, but when I heard there was an opportunity and I thought some of my favorite lawmakers would be here, I'd be happy to talk with them. Uh, but they're not here. So uh, why am I here? I'm here in memory and to honor T. Anthony Spearman. Yes. I'm here and I'm speaking because I'm happy to see a coalition of 16 organizations, if I count it right, on the front. Because these 16 organizations would be like the Florida Atlantic basketball team. Going to the Final Four, all undersized kids, but they got heart and they work together. They suborn their egos for the greater good. Because last night I was at the, my wife and I were at the, uh, meeting with the police chief and the mayor. And that turned into, part of me, Reverend Perry, a shit show. Because people tried to talk and have a conversation, and other people had to have their, their voices heard shouting out other people who were talking. And that is why one person said there last night, one or two said, that's why we can't win. Because everybody's got to have the camera, everybody's got to have the stage, everybody's got to be in front, be heard. But if we band together and say, we want to win, because there are more of us people who follow the red letters than there are suppressing us and oppressing us. I said the red letters because I go to this church, but in each, everybody's faith, even if you don't have a faith, you have a moral compass. You don't need to read another book, especially white people. You don't need to read another book to know what's going on. You don't need to use your Twitter muscles. You just need to show up, write, call, and be there. And be ready to be arrested, to be ready to call them out for what they are in a peaceful, nonviolent, direct action, just the way Dr. King advocated. But if you show up, and you show up, and you show up. After a while, even Netanyahu had to back down. <laughs> now, if the, now, if they did the same thing for the uh, Palestinians and had one-tenth of the passion to support the Palestinians, now that would be something. But I'm, I'm saying stick together, keep the coalition together. Let's not worry about who gets the glory. Let's worry about who wins. Thank you. Yes, indeed. A lot of good facts right there. Appreciate that, Brother Sony. All right, next, we got uh, Francia. Is Francia in here? Okay, nope. We got one more name. I'm going to butcher this name, not because it's complex, because I can't really read the words. <laughs> but I think it's uh, Valeria. 
East Cayino. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, we all good. And also, folks, if y'all feel moved to speak, anyone can speak. So just find me. At, well, find me to sign up. We've got a couple more names. But if you want to speak, come find me. I'll write your name down. Uh, but next, we've got Ren Martin and Susanna Tuttle, the dream duo. Welcome them up. Let's give them a round of applause. Hi, everybody. My name is Rent Susanna Tuttle, and I'm here with my colleague, Ren Martin, on behalf of the North Carolina Council of Churches. The North Carolina Council of Churches was formed in 1935, and we've been on the cutting edge of nonpartisan, justice-based work ever since. We currently represent 18 distinct denominations, inclusive of more than 6,200 congregations. So those are the people we're talking about, right? That we gotta reach across this great state. And we call on all of our elected officials to listen to and support the communities they are charged to serve, especially if they call themselves people of faith, of which we are going to hold them accountable. The North Carolina Council of Churches is a proud coalition member of the People's Coalition. We are working to educate, inspire, and mobilize around all the current policy issues and court cases while refracting everything through the lens of faith. And we are here tonight in solidarity with Common Cause and all the people and places that we love that they have already been harmed and continue to be oppressed by policies and practices designed to keep our communities from building power from the grassroots up. It's not enough to stand for the issues of human dignity and care for creation without being active in pursuit of their accomplishment. We must work toward the world God wants us to have, a world where every individual has the resources to flourish to their fullest at that individual's potential. This is what creates and protects the beloved community. And as the shirts we are wearing state, strength in unity, peace through justice. Yeah. Yeah. In advocacy and work, the significance of leading through faith first is that our movement comes from a place of compassion not toxic, toxic judgments, that we are connected with a network of individuals that are coming from a, a place of care for our neighbors rather than those who wish to ostracize others. Rather than, um, and we see that we are the, uh, the antidote to toxic theology and that this is a call to action to all people of faith to be a part of that solution. We came here today to connect with people of faith and conscience and to hear your voices and to help mobilize a movement towards justice and change. And after all, issues are, based, uh, are faith based because uh, Jesus taught us that we are not simply uh, able to sit idle, but be involved in our communities and be part of all the actions that are there and to do so together because we are all God's children. Our faith informs us and our actions towards social justice define us. I'm here to show that people of faith care, that I love my black sisters and brothers, my queer siblings, and young folk that look like me. I'm here to show that when our rights are attacked, that we will not let that stand. And I'm honored to stand here with you today and have this, this moment right here with all of you. Thanks. Yes, Cindy, thank both of y'all sisters right there. Appreciate that. Right, next we have Brother Rob Stevens coming on up. Rob, there he is, come on through. Good evening, family. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rob Stevens. I was um, part of the uh, Wall Monday efforts uh, 10 years ago. 
uh, been in the movement uh, for that. And since then, uh, with Poor People's Campaign, National Call for Moral Revival, and uh, Repairs and Breach, and honored now to be working towards what is now the 10 year anniversary and recommitment rally that's going to be April 24th uh, at 5.30. So the last uh, Monday in April, uh, just like we did 10 years ago when 17 folks walked into the General Assembly and then many of y'all came as well and uh, put your bodies online and over a thousand people were arrested in the largest uh, sustained campaign in the state uh, uh, legislature in the history of the uh, nation. Um, I want to say that uh, this is exciting. Uh, it's springtime, something about spring, it's the best time to build a movement. You know, things are thawing out, people are a little warm. Um, but it's also the time that we're called. If we can't fight back now, I don't know when we can. Um, we can be very, I've been uh, militantly nonpartisan and just as militantly political. Uh, it doesn't mean being nonpartisan actually frees us up to be even more political and to push folks even uh, more. And it means that we can't say, we can name names. That just today, three uh, Democrats and every single Republican in the House voted for HB 10. Those Democrats were Ray out in Halifax, Northampton. They were uh, 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 Cecil Brockman in High Point. Uh, and then, uh, who was the final one? Uh, Cotham, Trisha Cotham down in Mecklenburg County. And we've had uh, representatives and senators right here in Wake County. Senator Bodie, Representative Jones, who have voted for the anti-riot bill that's trying to criminalize uh, folks who, who protest. That defines a riot as three people. A three-person riot bill. I don't know why they just didn't say one. I mean, why, why make it three? And uh, that actually, you don't even have to do anything. Just a police officer has to think that you're about to do something. And under, if they think that, then you can have, be charged three times I guess it's three times the potential damage that you could have done. But that whatever damage happens, and then even if you don't even attend the rally, if you urge someone, maybe if you put someone on social media and say, go out, and you could be charged under this new law, that passed. That Governor Cooper, who vetoed two years ago, didn't have the spine to veto this time, but let go into law. Yep. And so he didn't sign it, that was his protest, I guess. Shame. But folks are doing this over and over again, and folks are not standing up. We can hold these vetoes. But there's not, at this point, people raising heaven at the General Assembly uh, to make sure that they know there's consequences, that there's primaries that are coming. And it's the people power that's in this room, the people power that's building, that was there on March 14th. Uh, and I'm just so encouraged myself uh, uh, to see all of you here. And I hope we continue to, you know, say yes. Uh, ben Toilet says, when does fundamental change, does it happen slowly, slowly, bit by bit, or suddenly all at once? And the answer is yes. That's exactly how change happens. That there's movement building, there's organizing, there's committee meetings, there's the type of work that made today happen, and there's moments like March 28th, spring 2023, that we'll look back as a time when fundamental change happened in our state. Thank you. Hey, thank you for that, Rob. Good information. Appreciate the names as well, too. Next, we're gonna go ahead and call on uh, Del Monte. Del Monte, come on through. You in? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Come on up. Everyone, if you want to speak, feel free to come by me. We'll put you up. You feel the spirit moving you. Come by me. Hey, good evening, everyone. My name is Del Monte Crawford. I am uh, a lieutenant uh, governor candidate of North Carolina uh, for the 2024 election, and I am thrilled to be here. Not only am I thrilled to be here, I'm happy to see the Honorable Lisa Grafstein here as well. Uh, she's our uh, District 13 uh, Senator, so I'm glad that she's here. What brought me here is to hear and to listen to the people of North Carolina and to listen to the citizens of Raleigh. Um, as a private citizen, I did denounce uh, House Bill 40. As the gentleman stated, there were uh, multiple Democrats uh, who were in favor of that. But as we know, House Bill 40 uh, disparages black Americans and marginalized groups from peacefully protesting. Um, in the death of uh, Daryl Williams, we went down uh, to downtown Raleigh and we peacefully protested but only imagine if that bill became law. Over 100 people right. 
a hundred people would have went to jail that day just for saying no justice, no peace. And so when, though this is a nonpartisan um, organization, we have to hold Republicans and Democrats accountable. As Lamar said, they can get the seat, but they don't want to move out of that seat. And we have to get them to move out of that seat, be active, like Lisa Grafstein's doing. She's being active in her community. Also, when it comes to uh, reparations for black Americans, that is a nonpartisan issue. These are reparative for the injustices that happened in our state. We know that North Carolina, South Carolina, and other states basically were built off the backs of black Americans. And so when we have these difficult conversations and really touch on what we need to touch on, which is the fact that an average black woman is likely to get evicted with, a, with one or two children. We know that undocumented immigrants are more likely to be pulled over and questioned about their status. We know that the gay and lesbian transgender community is often targeted by our current Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. So when people ask, why am I running for a state office, that's why. We need to bring normalcy back to our state and hold our elected officials accountable. So even down to the point when Edith Child says that we're fired up and ready to go, that hits home because we could be anywhere today, but we are here with Lisa Grafstein and with uh, Senator Berger, that's the reason why we are here, to let our voices be heard. And lastly, regarding uh, House Bill 40, you must reject the, the text that is in there. And though Governor Cooper did not uh, veto, we also have to hold our current governor accountable for what he is and is not doing. So with that, I want to thank you all for the time. And remember, hold your local officials accountable, hold your state officials accountable, and hold your federal officials accountable. Thank you. That's right, that's right. Hold them all accountable. Appreciate that. And next we're going to go ahead and call up our sister Martha. Martha, you in? There she is. Come on up, sister. I thank you for being here. My name is Marta Hernandez, and I'm gonna need help with my friends. <laughs> um, yo soy Marta Hernandez, obviamente soy una inmigrante, y esta sesión legislativa yo no he podido estar, eh, porque yo trabajo 40 horas, 50 horas para, para mantener a mi familia. So uh, I am Marta Hernandez, and uh, I, obviously I'm an immigrant. I, have not, I was not able to attend this legislative session because I work, I work 40, 50 hours a week to support my family. Pero me dijeron que esto lo van a hacer llegar a los legisladores y a los senadores, así que ahí les va. Uh, but I was told that this will reach our legislatures, our senator, uh, senators, so that's the way it goes. Eh, pues nada, yo nada más les tengo una pregunta. ¿Dónde está su democracia que tanto pregonan, la que tanto mencionan? ¿Dónde está su democracia? And I just have one question. Where is that democracy that they, they talk about, that they, that they uh, um, announce? Where is that democracy? ¿Y por qué les pregunto que dónde está su democracia que tanto gritan a los vientos? En Wake, en Wake elegimos a un sheriff, a un algo así, porque él dijo que él no quería trabajar con ICE, él no iba a trabajar con la migra. So the reason why I ask where where is this democracy they uh, they shout to the to uh, to the wind, um, I ask this because here in Wake, for example, we we chose uh, and voted for our sheriff because he said that he was not going to work uh, and cooperate with ICE. 
Eso fue lo que él nos prometió y él es lo que está haciendo y él ganó por, un, por votación. Fue una elección legal que es parte de una democracia. Así que yo les quiero preguntar a los legisladores, a los senadores que están apoyando esta propuesta, ¿están yendo contra la decisión de los votantes? ¿Están yendo contra su propia democracia? So that's why I want to ask uh, legislatures and senators who are uh, supporting this, this bill, you know, if the voice of, of, of people said uh, something, it seems that they're going against that voice, against that democracy. Si la, si la gente el, eligió a los sheriffs, eligió a senadores o a legisladores que han dicho que no quieren trabajar con ICE, que no quieren seguir uh, asesinando a gente de color, que no quieren seguir quitándole las casas a las personas retiradas porque no pueden pagar, porque ellos quieren hacer lo contrario. So if people elected the sheriff, uh, elected senators and legislatures, why is it that while these all these um, officials said that they, they don't want to cooperate with ICE, Why is it that they now want to uh, want to continue having people of color being killed? Why do they want to people who are retired to be um, um, to be left without their homes because of their because they're not able to pay for them? Así que el el llamado aquí si la si los votantes fuimos quienes lo pusimos ahí los votantes nos podemos quitar de ahí ya. Yeah. So the call here is that if voters put them there, we can also get them out. That's right. Vamos a quitarlos ya. We're going to get them out now. Thank you very much, Sister Martha. Good to see you. So uh, next, we wind it on down. We got uh, Jamie. Is Jamie in here? Come on up, Jamie. Research. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jamie Wagner, and I'm coming from Dare County, uh, North Carolina. I first just want to thank um, this overall opportunity and these coalitions, all of you working together, your efforts for a long-standing time, um, bringing the education representation and information, accurate information, all, all forth, and on behalf of a uh, community that seeks and... Um, Let me just dive into it. I feel that in Dare County, uh, we have a lack of representation there. Um, and on behalf of these topics, and on behalf of this movement forward, this necessary movement, um, I've been actively a part of my local civics and government and community, and what's available to us and organ organization-wise um, have helped to try and put with the overturning of Roe a couple of rallies together. Uh, 2021, 2020, going into 2022, it's very challenging and difficult. Um, but, so again, thank you for the opportunity as well for the platforms of legislation trainings that you guys have provided over the internet on behalf of NC Common Alliance. Uh, we've been sharing that best we can. Um, I would like to go into a little bit of insight and belief that I have regarding opportunities that you guys have all provided. I do think a big part of the movement and direction forward is pummeling through um, misguided information and um, purposeful, like intentional distractions on behalf of um, our local and state government and federal, if you may. Um, so I think it's our duty to continue to help educate, right? Like our, our, our future, our, our generations, our, our youth, Um, and we are at such a 
challenge. Uh, we're at such an intersection where the oppression, the continue of oppression of education and information um, and history and um, real-time events that have already unfolded and are still unfolding in front of us continue to be uh, silenced, um, and obviously through legislation and so forth. Um, so the time is now. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for this platform. I'm hoping that if you guys take it on tour, you guys will consider coming to speak to you know my community of people there who are itching and yearning for it. I promise you. I promise you. Um, yeah, thank you for being here. Sorry, I didn't have a big plan. I'm tired. I try to think as much as I can, respond to certain emails, sign up for speaking, if, and try and find the courage to even get up here. And, um, but I stand behind, right, like all of this. And, and so just to summarize in that, please come to the eastern side of the shore. Um, you know, bring your people. Uh, last thing, if I could just quickly note on, uh, and on that note, you know, I am very thankful to be a part of my community. I, I moved there five years ago from Chicago. I've been visiting for about seven, um, born and raised Chicago, but very thankful to be a part of my community. But again, I think in DARE we have a huge amount of privilege and power available in Eastern North Carolina. Um, so the call to action is to my community and my community members. This representation here tonight, um, people who have invested interests in DARE County, um, down to our beloved visitors, right, so, who help support my economy, and thank you, over there. Um, but we can't escape these everyday realities, okay? Um, not even when we're on vacation, um, and we have to be a part of this necessary movement, so I'm here to show up for that. Thank you, Ronna. Excellent remarks. Appreciate that. Next, we got Elaine. Is Elaine in the building? Yes, ma'am. Come on up. Come on, Elaine. Thank you. Hello, my name is Elaine Oakle. I live in Southern Wake County. Um, just wanted to mention one thing is uh, Ms. Rosa Gill in District 33 is my NC House Representative. She is, isn't able to be here this evening. She was still in session and she texted me saying that uh, she wasn't feeling well so she, she was going to have to go home. But she was planning on being here so I just want to do that. want to say to all of you, yeah you can text, you can email, but go talk to your legislators. They're people. They are not probably smarter than you are, and you're probably smarter than they are. Um, and most of them are people. They will listen to what you have to say. <laughs> and, you know, believe it or not, tell them a story. Tell them your personal story. That's the best way to do it. How something that you have a problem with is affecting you personally. That will give them some time. Um, for those of you playing uh, Bill Bingo, and thank you for uh, People's Coalition for putting this list of bills together. I have some that I'm following that aren't on here. Big, I've been fighting for legal rights amendments since college. As you can tell, it's been a long time. Anyway, this year again, we've uh, introduced two bills, HB 302 and SB 231 to have North Carolina ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. Another one that we keep that people overlook is H-235, which is to calling for an Article 5 convention. If this is moving through a lot of the states, it has passed in a lot of states, this would start a new Continental Congress where they would get together and rewrite our Constitution. Personally, I don't want that to happen right now. Also, there's two bills um, having one H321 and S294, which is to reduce, reduce maternal morbidity in North Carolina. The people that say that they believe in life, you'd think they'd support this. North, the maternal morbidity in North Carolina has doubled since 2019 
And with everything that's going on, it's just going to get worse with the overturning of Roe and um, possibly doing without um, the uh, abortion, medical abortion drugs, which do more than just that. Um, and then H421, which is the Medicaid coverage for doula services. And if you want to look up what a doula is, it's D-O-U-L-A, just in case you know. Another thing, look at the budget. There's a lot of stuff happening in the budget that people don't know. They can put laws in the budget and it will go through and pass. There's a lot of stuff in there. For example, I learned last year that there's money our money that goes to support these crisis pregnancy centers that don't provide valid medical information and are propaganda by the um, pro, pro life group. So there's a lot in there. Just look at it. I like it because I'm a nerd, but anyway, but there's a lot of stuff in there, so keep track of it. You can also follow bills by going to the North Carolina General Assembly website and going to the bill and say you want to follow it and you'll get lovely email updates as to when things go out of committee, into committee, and so forth. So just stay informed, stay in the fight. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Elaine. Stay informed and stay in the fight. Our last speaker we have is uh, Brianna. Brianna Garcia, you in here? Yes, ma'am. Come on, Phil. Hello, I'm Brianna Garcia. Um, I didn't have anything prepared, so I'll just be a little bit rambling. Um, I am the policy organizer with El Pueblo, and I just wanted to come and talk to you guys a little bit about how I'm feeling and I'm sure how many of us in here are feeling. And the two things that come into mind are proud and frustrated. I am proud that we are here as a community from diverse backgrounds to our, who are you know, able to speak about issues that address and concern our community. However, I'm angry that those who we invited, our representatives, are not here to talk to us. Similarly, today SB, HB 10 was heard, which is the cooperation between ICE and the Sheriff's Department. Today, something horrible happened. One of the representatives, Servandia, was cut off by her other representative. She was sharing a story about how her, she, was pulled over by the police and asked for her papers. She is a US citizen. Her father served over 20 years in the military and she was asked for her papers. And she was cut off talking about her personal experience. And that just made me frustrated because how am I, just a regular citizen, supposed to talk about my concerns and my community when their own representative doesn't have their respect? And it's clear how many issues we have and we are coming to our communities, coming to our legislators, wanting to be heard, and we're not. And so I hope that after this meeting is over, we're able to go and talk to our legislators, tell them the issues that are facing, get out in the community. Never would I have thought that issues from 10 years ago, like Sailor had said, would be brought up again. Issues about LGBTQ rights, immigrants' rights, black and brown rights, everything. It's crazy that they're trying to erase our history and create a narrative that is theirs and not ours. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna. We got one more speaker. I'm sorry. Uh, Sister Anna. Anna Weaver, come on through. Appreciate you. Thank you. My name is Anna Weaver, and I am here from Cary um, as in, in, in the respect of being a first-time activist. Aside from attending a couple of protests and voting my entire life, I have never done anything by way of political organizing. 
And because of the, the sentiments that uh, I share with all of the speakers who have uh, stepped up here, a deep commitment to democracy and a deep, deep frustration with things that are and are not happening, and the lack of interest, uh, it seems, uh, among our elected officials. Uh, one of the things that I have chosen to do about it is become part of uh, an organization, um, an organizational effort that I would like to share with you, and that is the Forward Party. Um, it is, like the People's Coalition, a fusion movement. Um, it uh, brings together people from all sides and in the middle, and we need to collect 14,000 signatures by registered voters across the nation. And my colleague, uh, Cliff Hamill, is here, and I have a petition as well, and we are prepared to gather signatures today on the way out if you would like to help uh, the Forward Party, Party become recognized in the state of North Carolina. And what we think this is going to do is to force back to center and force into collaboration and, and unlock some of the gridlock by uh, supporting election reform, open primaries, and ranked choice voting in particular. Um, and I would say, you know, in addition to welcoming those of you to uh, lend us your signature um, today, if you can, uh, I would say to the elected officials who are not here uh, to, to get ready to welcome some new representatives who are not from the left and they are not from the right and they are seeking only to go forward. Thank you. Oh, that was really loud. Sorry. Um, as Lamar said earlier, I want everyone to take just a moment, take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out. In a moment, we're going to start to close with where we go from here, uh, but we do want to acknowledge and provide uh, an opportunity. We do have two individuals here who are every day in the General Assembly. You all did raise many, many concerns about what has passed, questions you may have, uh, so we do want to give an opportunity to the two legislators who are here, if they so choose, uh, you all will be uh, subject to the same requirements, my friends, on time. Uh, but if there is an opportunity to respond to what you hear tonight, uh, we want to give you that opportunity now before we close. Thank, thank you. It's good to be here. I'm Lisa Grafstein. I represent Senate District 13, which is sort of North Raleigh. Midtown area. And I promise you that I have not hired Del Monte as my hype man. Uh, I guess I don't have to. So I appreciate the shout outs. Um, I guess my, I'm just, I was sitting there just kind of processing all this tonight. And one thing I will say is um, it's just so nice to be here and not there. Um, you know, it's a very difficult um, environment in the sense that everyone's nice and polite. Um, but, you know, on a real basic gut level, there's just a real different view of what the world is about and what our democracy is about. So I appreciate being amongst people who understand and are fighting for that every day. And I do want you to know that, you know, there are many of us there doing the same on the inside, and we have different roles to play in this process. And I think the only other thing I really want to make sure that you're aware of is, you know, there are a lot of terrible bills. <laughs> and um, they're, they're, they keep coming, and it's almost like a contest to see how many bad bills we can get through. Um, but, but there are a lot of us who are also trying to put out good bills for the purpose of, they're never going to pass <laughs> this year, this year. But I love the comment earlier, um, I think it was, this is named Rick, about, you know, you, you, it's gradual, gradual, and then all at once, right? So we're going to keep um, doing things like saying, uh, uh, filing bills that are, that are pro-choice bills, that are about women's rights uh, and reproductive freedom. We're going to keep filing bills that are pro-democracy bills, like the Freedom to Vote Act, which we file that is comprehensive reform of our voting system. We're going to uh, keep filing um, bills that have to do with LGBTQ rights, which tomorrow we will be releasing five bills out of the Senate and three out of the House that relate to just, uh, that are pro-equality bills for LGBTQ people. So, um, so, so uh, I, I, like, I like to say we're winning in slow motion. We will win. We will win. It's, good. It's, it's not this year, but we will win, and building the foundation and what you're doing to make sure that you're holding all of us accountable across the board is critical work to make sure that when we win, we do all the things that we've, that we've set out to do and that, we, that you all have been calling for. So thank you again for just the, filling my cup up so I can go back tomorrow.
Thanks, Senator Grabstein. I'll just I'll just echo exactly what she said. Uh, that how nice it is to be here. I'm Eric Ager. I'm uh, actually in the in the North Carolina House. I'm from uh, District 114, which is all the way out in Buncombe County. So this is not my home territory by any stretch, but but it's really encouraging to see so many folks out here getting involved, showing up. I mean, I had no idea what to expect. Um, you know, I come from, from the mountains, and, uh, and, I, and generally we don't get this big a crowd for an event like this. <laughs> so, um, you know, I really appreciate it. And, and I'll just echo a couple of things that I heard tonight that I think are really powerful. Um, and, and the first is go talk to your legislator. It really does matter. And talk to other legislators. We really are just normal people. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I sort of got strong-armed into doing this, but I grew up on a dairy farm. I milked cows growing up. Um, I spent 25 years in the Navy, bouncing all around the world, and, uh, and then came back and, and ran the family farm for a year and a half. Um, and, you know, I am, I am probably the profile of somebody most of you all don't really uh, think would be supportive of you. Um, <laughs> but, but I am. And so that, that to me just shows that you've got to talk to people. You've got to work these things out and, and you've got to be able to communicate. And, uh, and generally, when you sit in a room face to face and talk to people, generally we want the same thing and you just have to make sure you get there. So thanks a lot, everybody. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Representative Dagan and Senator Grassland. So I want to close tonight uh, by doing and by asking all of y'all, one, um, did you learn something tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Did you learn something about your neighbor? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to know your neighbor? Yeah. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do, because we are here tonight to start to bear witness and to share testimony about the North Carolina that we want to build and that we want to win. And part of how we do that is not only listening to each other, but it's meeting each other. So I'm going to do the thing they do in church. I haven't been to church in a long time, but we are in a church. I want you to turn to the person next to you or behind you. I want you to find somebody you don't know. I know it's awkward. I know it's socially awkward. Introduce yourself to someone you don't know. Do it right now. Now, as you are meeting that new person, I want you to take out your phone. Keep talking to the person you are meeting. I promise you're not exchanging numbers. That's not what this is about. But as you introduce yourself to somebody new, I want you to take a selfie together. Can you do that for me? And it's got a purpose. If you are meeting somebody new tonight, take a selfie with them right now if you're comfortable doing so. And I promise you there's a purpose. Take that selfie, take that selfie. I'll give you a second to take that photo. And after you take that photo with somebody you don't know, I want you, right now, to go to your social media account. Go to Facebook, go to Twitter, go to Instagram, hell, go to LinkedIn. And I want you to tweet that photo and tag your lawmaker. This is a pop quiz to see if you know your lawmaker. And I want you to tag your lawmaker and I want you to tag the lawmakers you see here. All right? So take that photo that you just took, go to your social media, and post on your social media. And if your lawmaker was not here tonight, ask them why they weren't here. Tag them. I'm sure they do. And I want you to tag your lawmaker, if they were not here tonight, with a photo of you, you and your new best friend, and ask them why they weren't here tonight. And I'll even throw up a hashtag NC People Power, all right? 
So, everybody come back to me for just a moment. Just come back to me for just a moment. Uh, if you are willing to end your conversations, we are going to close out here with our next steps. So please come back, find your seat, and I promise I'll have you out of here in a minute. So come back, come back to your seat. Uh, in just a moment here, we'll close right out, okay? Guys, look out. He's lost control. He's lost control. I know, I've lost it now. You did. <laughs> All right. Silence, please. Silence, please. Just real quick, just a few more minutes of your time. A few more minutes of your time. Find your seat. So I'm going to invite uh, our excellent moderator tonight here, Brother Angaza, up in a moment. Uh, to close us out uh, with maybe a chant or a few words to emphasize our solidarity. But I want to first thank you for being here tonight. I want to thank Poland Memorial Church uh, for hosting us tonight. <laughs> thank Angaza, Sailor Jones, who also spoke and helped moderate us. And I thank you to all the speakers who were here as well and shared their testimony. Uh, and to our friends who live streamed it statewide. Finally, I want to thank Language Services Solutions for providing Spanish language interpretation tonight. That's right. You did an excellent job, my friend. And where do we go from here? The another reason to use your phone if you are done tweeting that photo of you and your new best friend asking your lawmaker where they were tonight and why they weren't here. Feel free to scan this or scan on the sheets of paper you picked up. You will find links to upcoming events, upcoming lobby days at the General Assembly, actions on a range of issues. And if there's one thing you took away from tonight, it's that we need you at the building in Raleigh. We need you at the General Assembly. We need you there every day to advocate on these issues. So you will find every single day, every single day, <laughs> 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's what everybody does, right? Scan here for those next steps. Uh, and scan there also to uh, stay connected with us. Because uh, we are bringing, as Jamie said, we're going to Dare County. We're going to every single part of this state to bring this similar town hall to people all across North Carolina, not just here in Raleigh. So to close us out, uh, to emphasize our connectedness, our solidarity with each other on Gaza, uh, I'll call you right back up if you've got uh, kind of uh, a chant um, uh, that you'd like to, to lead us on to close us out. I hope I'm not putting you on the spot. I ain't got no, no justice, no peace. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might. Fire it up. Fire it up. Ready to go. Ready to go. go on. Let's do it one more time. Let's fire it up. I say fire it up. You say ready to go, okay? Right. Fire it up. Ready to go. Fire it up. Ready to go. One more time. Fire it up. Ready to go. And I want you one more time. I want you one more time to tell me. What does democracy look like? And I want you to respond and say, we are what democracy looks like, okay? So my friends, what does democracy look like? We are what democracy looks like. What does democracy look like? We are what democracy looks like. One more time, what, tell me what democracy looks like. We are what democracy looks like. That's right, I hope you believe it. Thank you for being here tonight. Please feel free to stick around, ask questions. Grab some food. Thank you for being here, y'all.